So we got the car back from paint. It looks awesome. It's a really cool color. We'll get into that more later. We want to get this car done, but we don't have any wires. And to help out, we got the guys from Wiring Specialties. It's Earl, Joe. Everything looks amazing from their harness. This is one thing I don't know anything about, so they're here to help me. Be tech support and also help get this thing running and running correctly. So we're gonna get straight to work and get at it and hopefully get this thing running real soon. All right, so we're day two with these guys from Wiring Specialties. I will catch everybody up to speed on what we had to do. You guys did a lot more than I did. I was more of a gopher and just, hey, let's get this stuff done. For me, if I was just to buy this off the street and we got an old crusty harness, do I have to send that guy to the You're gonna to throw you that the into the garbage and you're gonna go right online. Just and throw it away. Right into the garbage. Don't need it. And you guys make everything brand new. Yeah, it's Correct. all brand new all Teflon coated wire, yeah, new, Teflon new connectors, strong. everything's sealed it's, with weather. That's a good point though. A lot of guys seals. do attempt to use those harnesses because yeah. it is fairly easy to do a standalone harness. Right. Um, but the heat cycles of you know 20 years uh, just really degrades uh, right. the harness. So you're right. going to put yeah. all this money and time into an engine yeah. and you're going to use a 20 year old. And they're not going to drive it easy. And then, yeah, so yeah. So we all beat it. them up. So okay. what we did for you was we did a standalone. So this harness is completely not relying on anything chassis wise. Right. So it's got its own dedicated busman fuse and relay box. Everything's gonna be else is gonna be done, you know, power, uh, power cables and everything like that, switches. So, and, th and this is a, just a case by case for this. Like this, yeah. this car was set to be out and just be a track car. We're not gonna drive it on the street, but like- Yeah, basically said, yeah. if you started with like the shit car outside or whatever. Yeah. The full harness is there, just unplug the engine harness, run a couple battery cables, clip our harness in. Your harness just goes done. directly done. in. Yep. All the gauges done. will work, AC. Everything's brand new, not an old wire in there, not an old crusty connector. Yep. yep. And, and that's for any engine that we support. You got LS's, you got JZ's, the bases are all covered. And then we support yeah. a ton of ECU's too. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's a good point to bring up. So on this car, we're doing your Haltech. Yeah. Uh, so we have a 2500 standalone, mm -hmm. which is going to be awesome uh, in the long run because your tunability obviously needed for that Edelbrock Plenum. So you guys deal with the Haltech pretty often. We do. And um, just want to explain what the benefit is of running something like that and, and that series ECU. So basically you get a bunch of different inputs into it. So you can run all sorts of safety limiters, like oil pressure safety, coolant temp safety, oil temp. Eyes on everything. Yeah, basically. Something that you don't then, have to worry, which is perfect yeah. for you because you, you can't handle looking at gauges. Yeah, I hate, so, I hate yeah, looking at gauges. So now you're, you're not relying on you saying, holy crap, I'm running you know, super lean or super rich. Yeah. Let me shut down. The ECU is going to be like, holy crap, super fast and it's gonna put you into a limp mode. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys came out here and did spectacular work. So I wanted to make sure they had a nice loop so that it wasn't tension on the wires and that everything tucked in there nice. And then this plenum uses injectors that are buried underneath the center. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I put two disconnects in the back here so that it's modular and you can lift the plenum up yeah, without sweet. removing the engine harness. This is super slick here. Let's get it started. So quick update, we've got the harness all in, checking a little bit of fuel pressure, had to throw a gauge on it because we didn't have it for the uh, old ECU. Yes, sir. We're ready to go. I think so. So at the moment, we have uh, got some, some power on. The stack is fired up. Oh, look at it. Downloading a base map, getting a few pins. We're reassigning some of the digital outputs here. Yep. So we're real close. I can smell fuel because we already had one leak. So we're <laughs> Fired it up, this. that's fixed. And uh, the next update, we will be firing this bad boy up. Uh, quick check underneath that there's not a puddle underneath. Yeah, make sure all the filter Also lines. grab a fire extinguisher. If I set the camera far away, it'll catch any explosions we have. Haven't you seen anything of our shows? Yeah. Moment of truth. Oh. Smoke come back down. Yeah, it's weird. There's a little smoky in here. We've touched a lot of things. New car. It's got to burn through a lot of stuff. So we took it out from inside. 
to outside so we can actually get this thing to idle. So we just got a few things we have to touch up on. We got to do a couple things for the vacuum leak. So we're going to throw some carb cleaner at it. We don't have a smoke tester here. So we're just an old school method of trying to find this leak. And I think we kind of found a problem with the throttle body it was a little bit loose. So maybe that did it. If not, we'll find it, but I'm going to do it outside so we can breathe. Well, boys, we've done it. Indeed. It works. We had a few issues. We figured it out. All the wiring was fantastic. It looks phenomenal. You guys way outdid yourselves. You're always welcome back. Awesome. Because I'll probably need you again. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll so, definitely be back. Yep. Sounds good. Thank man. you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Great time. So the car is near completion. One thing we have to do is safety. We have to get to track inspection and make sure the car is ready to get out on the track. And we've got a guest, Kevin. Kevin's from Formula Drift. He's the man that you have to go through for any tech inspection. The one that will tell you if you can or cannot be on, on track and why he's gonna keep us safe. So, all right, one of the first things I look at is uh, tube size. So we require an inch and a half 095 for Formula D. The door bars are good on this car. They're a good height. Um, protect the driver. And the height is where in the door? Um, half the height of the door is our minimum for the top bar. So that obviously depends on seat placement, you know, doing car variations and stuff like that. So you that. don't want it below your hip? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Want to make sure that you're protected at least up to here because uh, side another... impacts are a common occurrence. Yeah, and especially in drifting. So you might yeah. have a, do a bumper in your rib cage. Yeah, or, or, or a tire, yeah. <laughs> And uh, this car actually has the anti-intrusion bars in it, which is good. And these are the anti-intrusion bars down here. So what he's speaking of. That's to keep the wheel from coming through. Yep. Which we've actually seen happen. Yes, that and is that's true. that's why that rule is in place. Yep, because it'll fold the pedals right over and your feet along with it. <laughs> it has a roof bar, which is extra. We don't require that either. But it's extra safety feature, especially when you've got a big open sunroof like this one. This cage is a little bit different because this diagonal bar here actually has a, a bend in it. It's bent in just a... A little bit here. Yeah, a few degrees there bent in the middle. It's triangulated back in with this full X, so it would probably be okay in most cases, but we, uh, we prefer definitely a straight bar on it. And for the diagonal, that has to be one straight piece. Yes, yeah, so th this so bar is actually any... one piece, yeah. but it's supposed to be one piece straight. And then this one is different because this harness bar is actually offset the full length. So normally you don't do this much of a big radius bend. Yeah. It's usually less than that. So on this one, you have to be careful once the seat's in place, when your harnesses come back, you have to make sure you have something here to stay. It'll slide forward if you are in an impact. You just slip or right could here. just slide forward when you're just driving and normally. And if you see the distance from here to there, that's how much further you can go forward. Right. That's not good. But you're gonna tell us some stuff that's wrong with this too, because I know you've already spotted some stuff. Yep. Um, on this car, the down bars that come back, they actually mount to a cross tube between the strut towers. Mm -hmm. So for most racing things, I don't believe that would be a problem whatsoever yeah. because this is still a pretty secure design. Yeah. But for our regulations, we require this down tube to actually come to a plate. Yeah. And so this would have to come to a plate either on the strut tower here or over in here, you know, yeah. actually on an actual flat nice. surface. That's one of the things if you're, <laughs> if, you're, if you're probably not building it yourself, you're probably having someone build it for you, make sure you send them the rules. Yeah. Just so at least they can read through. We've got pictures and diagrams in there. Make sure you pay attention to that. If you guys are building a Pro-Am car, possibly going Pro-2, Pro-1, look at all these directions that you're going to have to go through because Kevin will stop you and say, go home, fix this. So. And you can buy the, the right part the first time. Yeah. Instead of <laughs> just, buying it again later. Also, I kind of want to know what else you're looking for, just so people kind of get a, a grasp for what you're looking at at the track. Okay. Um, I mean, for the most part, I usually look and see how the seat belts are going to be mounted, how the seat brackets are attached. Besides that, I mean, I, I look and see how the, how the fuel system is. Like, this car's running the stock tank, so I just make sure that the stock covers would be on there, so right. it'd be covered if it's a fuel cell and obviously usually mounted in the middle of the back. Mm -hmm. That has to be completely covered, either covered in the box itself or firewalled off entirely. What are you looking for in a bash bar? What is from? Um, basically like 
This is fine because this is entirely factory. Yeah. We have no problem with that section. If you are using, you know, like if you decided to make a different bash bar that yeah. attached to the stock pieces, I require four bolts mm -hmm. to hold those on. This, for example, this oil cooler is yeah. not allowed in our rolls either. That would have to be moved inboard of inboard, here. Yeah. It has to be in relationship to the frame rails, but there's odd rules that are for Formula D circumstances due that's, to oil downs and yeah. stuff like that and that don't necessarily apply. it's more of a high contact apply. sport as far as anything goes in, in racing. For our purposes, what we intend to do with this thing, it's really not a big deal. We can have that. Most guys that are running time attack, stuff like that, will have coolers almost everywhere. They're not expecting contact, but for Formula Drift, that's all got to be inside, in case, because these guys expect some damage. Yep. Well, man, very good to have you over. No I, problem, anytime. We know we have a pretty safe car. I'm not going to die on track. Yep. So that's good. And uh, thanks for giving us the information that guys, you know, some guys just overlook. You know, it's a very important part of motorsport and guys need to know it. You're the man that's going to keep us safe on track. You're also the dreaded man that wants to send teams home. But, but I'd rather have it safe than, and, and do a little extra work than have a catastrophe on track. But absolutely. I know you're a busy man. Thanks for coming over. Not a problem. Anytime, awesome. let me know. So today we're here at Animal Auto, gonna strap the car down on the dyno. I'm kind of nervous because it's where we find out if I did anything right or wrong. So Andrew's gonna be tuning it up for us today. Um, hopefully get the Haltech and the LS1 together and we make some good power and reliable power at that. So. So a successful day here at Animal Auto. Uh, we had a few problems this morning, just a couple little hiccups, but Andrew got us a really nice tune. We had a really reliable 400 horsepower. I'm pretty excited to use it, and we should be able to just shred this thing. It took a pretty good beating at the dyno today. It sounds amazing. So all we have left to do is to put some body panels on this thing, see what it actually looks like, and go shred it at the track.